Awesome. All right. Here's a here's a interesting one. Gents listener Levi says, I saw Mark Ribito made fun of kettlebells. Called them useless. Are kettlebells useless, Dan? What are we to what are we to make of this? Well, in the Mark last Ribito is well known in the strength world, of course, if people are Yeah, in the last kettlebells. couple of months, years, uh Mark has gotten increasingly more, you know. Uh, you know, I, I, I have, this isn't the first time I've heard this, uh, by the way, this isn't new information. Uh, he's getting increasingly more uh, like, like angry at the microphone, you know, um, just cause he doesn't find you. Uh, I, I mean, that's uh, to quote the great, uh, the great uh, Jeff Lebowski. Uh, that's like your opinion, man. Um, yeah. I don't uh, See, when you make a grand statement like that, uh, kettlebells are useless, it demands a high level of proof. And I just don't. Useless. I, I mean, it, it, so I don't, I don't. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. If that door needs to be held open, my 10 kilo kettlebell will hold it open until the end of the earth. So <laughs> by definition, then, um, it's not you. It has a use. So right there with that simple explanation, I'm right. Um, if, if you're fishing over here in Island Pond and the depth of lake at one point is 61 feet and you were to wrap your fishing line around that kettlebell a certain way and had a quick release on it, you could get that lure or, well, uh, probably if you live bait, what you know, I'm guessing live bait at 61 feet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It would, so I've given you two examples how the kettlebell is not useless. One as a door jam two, as a fishing weight. I like it when I travel because a 20 kilo bell, which is this big, you safety, you, you put the, the, the seat belt through it and you put it in the back, the seat behind the passengers on the passenger side, and you can drive all the way across a country and get 100 presses a day in every single day and, and put and the kettlebell stays right there. So there's another use I can train on the road. Um, it's a competition uh, exercise. You could say the discus is, is useless, and I would agree 100%, except it paid for all my education and all my travel. Uh, I was a high-level discus thrower from 1970 to uh, July 24th, 2010, when I officially retired. Uh, the discus is useless, but it paid for all my education and travel. So useless is a broad term, and it's a very powerful term, and it would demand more than just someone yelling at a microphone. Uh, I think Mike Boyle's comments on uh, Ripito at Perform Better were insightful. And uh, um, this would be a better question probably for Mike. Yeah, well, I'll just add a, a few thoughts that, of course, Dan, that was well said, and I think absolutely accurate. I don't know the context of this, so if there is a context that I'm missing, forgive me. But a statement like that just seems so obviously preposterous, right? If you're saying, hey, the kettlebell is useless or not uh, as great as, say, the barbell if you're trying to do a deadlifting competition, who's going to argue with that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Only an idiot, right? But to say it's useless full stop, it's just demonstrably false, right? The kettlebell is a training tool like anything else. And when appropriately used, intelligently programmed not only can, but has gotten people tremendous results that they're very happy to have. So it just seems like statements like that just strike me as just so ridiculous that if, if people just sort of blindly buy into them and parrot them, you might want to, you might want to, you might want to think about taking a more critically reflective turn in relation to the types of people that you're following online, regardless of what else they say that might be very useful. Right. And I'm not denying, you know, I've, I've, I've read Ripito's stuff before and his starting strength and yeah, fine, good stuff. But people can say good things in one area and clearly ridiculous things in another. So there you go. And, All right. And, yep. if, and I'm going to ask you, Pat, uh, as a friend of mine, and I'm going to ask our gentle listeners, if I ever start coming across as old man yelling at clouds and, and divisive and demeaning, would you please call me out on it? Uh, that... Uh, Especially if you start being mean to your microphone. I mean, what did the poor microphone ever do? I couldn't imagine being mean to my to my little Behringer or whatever this is. He's so, I, I he's worry, nothing but good to me. I, I worry about that because it's it's very common. I mean, it, it and I'm not I'm not singling out uh, uh, Rip or anything. I'm just saying that you see it a lot. Uh, 
Liebestrength uh, over at the, in Germany. He has that, uh, and he he's talked about this several times. And he's also he's the one that did, had me uh, when Steve Maxwell called me out for for having injuries. Folks, I have injuries. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I will say this though: for 65, I still think I'm probably stronger than most people ever. Uh, so if I do start to come off as, is that way, please let me know. There are times I get frustrated. And if you ask me the same question 10,000 times, I know I get a little bit angry and, and a little bit ugh, God, again. Uh, but, uh, uh, just remind me, Pat. And, and I think I've been, yeah, I think I would like that. If you just remind me to, to, to Hey Dan, you're getting, you're, you're grouchy and, and, because that's when that's that's a sign that you know, it's a sign that you're no longer in. <laughs> Wayne just right. You could be nicer about London.